Welcome back, and for this video, we're going to be talking about changing a color through script. So I've created a nice script called The World Needs Color, and I've attached it to the plane. So it looks like we're going to be changing the color of the plane in this script. Now, when I switch over to Visual Studio, I want to declare a few variables in the beginning, because color is actually a four-part variable. So let's start with public color. And we'll call this my color. Now, the four parts to this variable are R, G, B, and A. R for red, B for blue, G for green, A for alpha. I know I said that out of order. I want to create a float for each one of those. So this would be R float, public float, G float. Public, I'm going to do this in order so that I don't get them confused. B float and public float a float. A float. The color is a float. All right, so we have our four floats, and these floats go from 0 to 1. Those are the minimum and maximum values, selecting the amount of red, the amount of green, the amount of blue, and the amount of alpha. So by default, these will all be um, zero, but I want my alpha to actually be a, or, or sorry, to be one. And the reason for that is one would be like maximum alpha, so I'll get some nice intense colors. So it's a good idea to save your scripts periodically, by the way. Okay, the rest of my values, I'll just leave them as is. Now I also probably need a renderer variable. So let's go ahead and create a renderer. I don't know why it decided to all of a sudden indent, but let's fix that. So public renderer, my renderer. And in start, let's say my renderer equals game object dot get component renderer. Now, really important, don't forget the parentheses on the outside, semicolon. So now I've got my renderer, it's accessible and we can change some colors. So in update, what we want to do is we want to write a few conditions. So if input.getKey down, the reason why we're doing that is actually let's do get key. Input.getKey. The difference here is get key will apply every frame if you're holding the key. Whereas get key down only applies once right when you press the key. So input get key down key code. Now let's use some familiar uh, key codes here. Let's use A for alpha. And then we'll do something. Let's use, uh, we're going to copy this, paste it three more times. Let's use R for red, G for green, and B for blue. Now, what we're going to say about the alpha is, and we're actually going to have to stack this into the R, the G, and the B as well, if um, A float is less than one, then what we want to do is a float plus equals 0.01f. So we're going to add one one hundredth to our float if it's less than one. If it's not less than one else, then we need to reset the value because that means it's one and we would start exceeding our maximum. So we're going to go ahead and say a float equals zero. Awesome. We're going to do the same thing with our R, G, and B. So I'm copying and pasting, and then I'm going to change these so that they say the correct thing. So for R, we want it to not be A float, but R float. Oops. In fact, uh, this is a good time to show you how to change these things uh, really fast. You can press Control F, and then you have to press the down arrow. You can do A float and change that to R float. That was a variable I was using before. Okay, so you can replace next. Check it out really fast. Then change that to uh, G float. Make sure that your capitalization is correct. And then change it to B float. You don't want to use replace all because that would even go to the ones above. Okay, so we can exit out of that. Sweet. 
And um, okay, if we press any of these keys, these floats will change. But we haven't changed the color yet. So what we want to do is after we collect all our RGB changes and alpha changes, we want to set the color. So let's say my color equals new color. Kind of like a vector three, you'd say new color. And then in parentheses, we're going to put our RGB and A values. So we're going to put R float, G float, B float, and A float. Great. We've set our color value, so the color will be changing. But we haven't yet assigned it to our game object. So the next thing we want to do is change the material on the renderer. So we're going to go to my renderer dot material dot color and we're going to set it equal to the color that we've just created so you do have to create a color variable because uh, unity doesn't like to let you just change the value of the color right here so you can't just put like my color dot a and then equal some value uh, i believe you have to actually create a color variable i could be wrong but um, we're going to go with it this way Okay, so we'll set that value to my color that we've created, and let's try it out. So we'll hit play in Unity. So remember, we're using R, G, B, and A. You know what? I probably should not have used A, because A is going to make the cube move to the left. But anyway, let's try it out. So I'm going to press R and see what happens. Check it out. We're going red, and then it resets. So once our value hits 1, it's going to reset. See that? Okay, now let's go to uh, G. Our green is increasing. We're able to reach some new colors. Let me bring my R back to like close to zero and then check it out. We got a nice green color here. Let's bring the green close to zero and then let's press B. So we can get our blues. Now let's press R, G, and B at the same time. Oh, look at that. It makes a nice white when you put all three of them together. And if we wanted to change our A values, we could get a, a new intensity. So I'm going to press A now and my A float should change. Also, the cube will move because I forgot to turn that script off. But when my alpha changes, um, basically your color should be changing in some way. So if I intensify the red, that might help out with this alpha issue. Oops. Trying to get it as intense as possible. Ideally, you would see a slight change in the color. I'm going to make it just red. So I'm going to get rid of the alpha, or sorry, the, the G and the B. So if I change the alpha, I should get a change in color. It looks like, because of the way the renderer is running, the alpha is not affecting it. So let's go on to the plane and then look at its mesh renderer. Oops. Uh, I actually have no idea what I'm talking about right now. Let's go to the material. And check the rendering mode. Right now we're in opaque rendering mode. Um, so the opaque, it's not really going to do anything with the alpha, but check this out. I'm going to put it on transparent. And now, all of a sudden, you can kind of see through it. But even better, if I change the alpha, it'll go from transparent to opaque. So there's a lot you can do this. Uh, there's a lot you can do with this, a lot of things you can apply it to in your game. For example, when it's more transparent, um, if you wanted to set the value of a color to transparent, you could put something like this in front of the camera. And then by putting that game object in front of the camera, I'm going to rotate it along the y-axis to like a 90, oops, not that one. Uh, I'm going to rotate it along the x-axis, sorry, 90 degrees, negative uh, 90, because planes do that. If you put this in front of the camera, and you only change the color to this like nice transparent red whenever someone was taking damage, for example, you could have a um, hit notification that the, the player has just taken some damage, and then you would take it away. So it could kind of overlay over the whole screen, and it would be you know like the color of blood red. So there's some cool things you can do with color. Um, if you wanted to just change the color for a period of time, you get kind of like a Super Mario effect. Or if you want, you know, the person to be able to change their color, that's something you can do with it. So hopefully this helps, um, and hopefully you have a place for changing colors in your games.